Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'd like to present our theoretical work, Bound States in the Continuum and Asymmetric Waveguides, the role of proportionate coupling. The outline of my speech is the following. First of all, I'll state the motivation of our work. Then I'll describe the system we are focused on and the corresponding theoretical model. After that, I'll show how the conditions for bound state in the continuum formation are deduced from this model. In the end, I'll discuss quantum mechanical and electromagnetic examples. And finally, a short summary will be made. Motivation. Bound state in the continuum, BICS, were introduced at the dawn of quantum mechanics by von Neumann and Wigner. These states are fully localized, but with energy lined within the range of continuous spectrum. Today we know that BIC is a universal phenomenon of wave nature, and hence it can be observed in quantum mechanics, optics, acoustics, and so on. In practice, BICs are typically revealed as extremely high Q resonances. Such resonances find many applications, mainly in optics, including enhancement of light-matter interaction for lasing, harmonic generation, efficient light guiding, and etc. BICs in past years have been studied in a tremendous number of electronic and electromagnetic structures the vast majority of which were symmetric. There are some attempts to extend the idea of BIC onto non-symmetric system. However, typically in non-symmetric systems, one considers quasi-BIC instead of true BICs. In other cases, systems uh, are either retain some symmetry elements or are coupled to a single continuum where standard methods are applicable. In our work, we explicitly show the big formation mechanism in two-terminal system, which is not related to symmetry. Moreover, we illustrate our results with numerical examples of quantum billiard and electromagnetic waveguide with cavity. So I begin with the general quantum mechanical model. We can see the an electron resonator coupled to two electron waveguides, which we refer to as left and right. We assume that each waveguide has only one propagating mode within the energy range of interest. The coherent scattering problem can be solved within the formalism of non-equilibrium Green's function. For this reason, we introduce waveguide self-energies and then apply the Landauer formula for transmission coefficient. In our previous paper, we have shown that the transmission coefficient can be written in a form more appropriate for analysis of interference phenomena. Indeed, in this form, one can see that Root, real root of P function corresponds to the anti-resonance, zero transmission. Real root of Q function corresponds to resonance, unity transmission. And the common root of P and Q functions, common real root, indicates the formation of bound state in the continuum. In general, functions P and Q can be derived in terms of the energies of the isolated resonator and couplings to the waveguides. <coughs> we focus on the situation when there are two agent states with close energies. Typically, it takes place near the region of avoided crossing. In this situation, the standard friedrich wingin mechanism of big formation would take place if the resonator was coupled to a single continuum, in other words, to a single waveguide. Here, we can see a more general configuration with two attached waveguides. In the vicinity of the closed energies, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, we can approximate summation in functions f by two terms corresponding to these states and take all the rest states as some constants. In this case, we get functions p and q as rational functions. <clears throat> and then one can easily analyze their roots in order to derive conditions for big formation. As I have said before, big formation takes place when functions p and q have a common real root. In the case of rational functions, we can conclude this takes, this, that this takes place when the resultant of the enumerators vanishes. This requirement, first of all, leads to the standard friedrich wingin energy and the condition for the energy split between the states. However, in the same time, another condition naturally arises here, the condition of proportionate coupling. <clears throat> This condition is fulfilled automatically in specially symmetric systems, which are typically considered for big formation. Hence, as far as we are concerned, it was not <clears throat> recognized earlier. The important thing here is that this condition corresponds only to two states, and hence it can be fulfilled in a, an asymmetric system as well, what I'll try to illustrate in the rest part of my speech. Numerical calculations. As a first example, we take a two-dimensional quantum billiard with two waveguides of different widths. 
Parameters of the system are shown in the slide. The scattering problem for the system is solved by the two-dimensional Schrodinger equation using the aging mode decomposition in the region of waveguides and resonator. The exact, the exact solution requires all the infinite number of modes of transverse quantization to be taken into account, including both states of discrete and continuous spectra, of course. The latter uh, continuous spectrum is simulated by a dense set of discrete states formed between two artificial borders of infinite potential located uh, along the x-axis from <clears throat> at the distance capital Y from the resonator. Value of capital Y can be defined from the convergence of the conditions. Also, the convergence conditions defines the number of modes taken into account. In our calculations, it's about 30 to 40. Aging energies of the isolated billiard can become degenerate. Thus, the standard friedrich wingen condition turns into requirement of degeneracy. The plot shows the dependence of some aging energies of the resonator uh, on its length. The plot shows uh, degeneracy corresponds uh, to the intersection of these lines. Uh, for certainty, we focus on point A and point B. In the case of equal waveguides, point A would correspond to the beak in a sim mirror symmetric system, and point B would correspond to a beak in a central symmetric system. Here we consider waveguides of different widths, 5 nanometers left one and 4 nanometers right one. Coupling between the resonators of aging states and the propagating mode in the left and right waveguide depends on their width and the position in relation to the resonator. For fixed width of the waveguides and the position of the left one, we can varize the position of the right waveguide in order to fulfill the condition of proportionate coupling. For a certain value of parameters, we get that this condition is satisfied for either nearly mirror symmetric configuration point A or nearly central symmetric configuration, point B. From the, scattering uh, from the scattering point of view, big formation manifests itself as a collapse of final resonance where uh, transmission zero and transmission unity coincide. <clears throat> the lower plot illustrates the numerically calculated final resonance width versus the position of the right waveguide in our quantum billiard example. One can see that at some point it turns to zero, which indicates the big formation. Here is a normalized density distribution for bigs in a symmetric quantum billiard with nearly mirror symmetric configuration and nearly central symmetric configuration. Similarly, we can see that in a symmetric electromagnetic waveguide with a cavity, the two-dimensional geometry of this system is the same as for quantum billiard. However, contrary to quantum mechanics, in purely dielectric waveguides, decaying mode in the propagation direction, x direction, do not exist. These modes are obligatory to provide bound states <coughs> responsible for final resonance and hence for big formation. Thus, we insert our dielectric waveguide between two ideally conducting metal plates. The algorithm of fired in big in the electromagnetic scattering problem is similar to the previously described quantum mechanical system. Solving the two-dimensional Helmholtz equation, one can get that the distribu distribution of the electric field in the big nearly mirror symmetric or nearly central symmetric is almost the same as in the case of quantum billiard. However, I admit here that the more complicated nature of the Helmholtz equation provides the possibility of four configurations possessing big with different values of the with different positions of the right waveguide. Two of them are nearly mirror symmetric and two of them are nearly central symmetric. Here is the plot of final resonance width for a nearly mirror symmetric configuration. One can see two zero minimas which correspond to two bigs. Alternatively, the maximum electric field normalized to the incident electric field diverges at these points. One can see that there is a wide range of parameters where the, between these two bigs, where resonance width remains small, which provides a relatively high Q factor. Summary. We have developed an analytical formalism for the treatment of resonant phenomena and big formation. This formalism allowed us to derive proportionate coupling condition for big formation in an arbitrary, non-symmetric, two-terminal quantum conductor. As an example, we provide numerical calculations which demonstrate big formation in quantum billiard and optical waveguide with a cavity. Thank you for your attention.